Hello everyone and welcome to Nickrit. My name is Cody and in today's video we're going to be going over how to make this really cute what I'm calling a monster body. And this is a general amigurumi body so you can use it for pretty much anything. I'm going to be using this as a base for a lot of my future tutorials. So there's that. I'm going to be using it as a Sasquatch in my Windigo monster tutorial and I'm also in my next video I'm going to explain how to turn it from being just a general body with no arms. I'm not going to do the arms in the second tutorial and how to turn it into this cute little crewmate from Among Us. I've been watching so many Let's Plays where people are playing it and it's a lot of fun to watch and I decided I wanted to make one, especially since I had a nice little recommendation uh, from a couple of my subscribers and I'm really excited to try this. I thought it would be very similar to my last tutorial, which was the Fall Guys tutorial, which I'm going to pop up right there so you can see and you can go ahead and click that if you're interested in Fall Guys. But um, basically in this video tutorial, we're going to go over how to make this general body shape and how to make these arms. So in order to do that, you're going to want to go down and watch my stacked versus staggering increases tutorial. Otherwise, this is just going to be another 40 minute long tutorial and I don't want it to be uh, 40 minutes longer than it needs to be. I already did a tutorial explaining the increases so go ahead and pop over there and do the increases. I'm going to be using some worsted weight yarn and we're going to increase all the way up to 36 stitches. We already have that done. That is basically what our top is going to look like. I stagger my stitches to give it a bit more of a roundness to it and I like how that looks better. I'm using some worsted weight yarn. Whatever worsted weight yarn you like is what you should use. I personally love the Lion Brand Heartland yarn. That is Black Canyon. I think that's Sequoia. And there's a red and there's a purple. I'm going to look up the color and try to pop up on here um, for all of the different colors. So I've got red, purple, and I've got this really pretty green color that I'm going to be making a Cyclops out of. So that's going to be a Sasquatch. That one's going to be a Wendigo. I was going to try to make a Yeti to go with a Sasquatch because they're essentially going to be the same model. But as you can see, I A, couldn't find a good white color in the Heartland, which is a downside. And when I went to go pick a random no-pill yarn, thinking that that would kind of be fun, look at its body compared to my Heartland ones. The Heartland ones are all on par. They're all pretty much the same, except for, well, my window goes a little fatter because I stuffed them more. But that's, they're all the same exact size if you look at them all. This one little white, I think it's because of the elasticity of the yarn. This is a no-pill yarn, so there's a lot less, I mean, there's a lot more elasticity to it. And I just, it kept on stretching and stretching. And as you can see, you can see the stuffing through it and it just didn't look good. So I'm probably going to scrap this, probably going to cut it open for its stuffing so that I can have that back. But you will need some stuffing for this project. You're also gonna need some worsted white yarn. Whatever you wanna do, I would just consistently use the same yarn that you are most comfortable with. I have some darning scissors, which I use just for chopping off a little bit of thread here and there. I have some darning needles, which are gonna be in my bowl. I also, you, you will need some polyfill, some polyester fiber fill that goes right inside. And whatever eyes or anything you need for that, if you need safety eyes, use safety eyes, add them wherever you want them. I'm going to be doing a lot of different stuff with felt, so, you know, stay tuned with that. Um, I also have these bamboo sticks, which I use to stick the arms onto the sides of the body when I'm sewing them. So I just kind of stuff them on like so. I figure out where I want them and I just stab them in. I'll show you how I do that in just a moment. You will also need a size D3 or 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I'm using my favorite Furls crochet hook. I'm an affiliate with them. I love my affiliation with Furls because it is a beautiful crochet hook and it works really well. It keeps me from snagging over everything. So yeah, I have links for everything down below. Hopefully I'll have a nice description and also this will be a pattern that will be for free for the first week. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. To begin, you're going to want to go on over to the stacked versus staggering tutorial and you're going to get yourself up to 36 stitches. And when you are at 36 stitches, the main body part of this is you're going to single crochet around for 11 rounds. I'm going to pop up a nice little link here, hopefully explaining everything. And I'm basically just going to single crochet around until it's the length that I wanted. If you want a longer body, 
just crochet around for a longer period of time. And once you're done, I will show you how I split off the legs and then I will also explain how I do the arms. So I'm just gonna go around and around and around in the round. You're gonna wanna be comfortable with working in the round for 11 rounds, basically. I'm just gonna keep going in and single crocheting. A thing with my stitches that I will say is that I go through just the front loop because I find that it looks a bit bubblier. I also go from left to right instead of right to left because I'm dyslexic and I learned the wrong way. So there's that. But that's, if you're wondering why my stitches look a little funny or different, those could be factors. So I'm just gonna single crochet around for 11 rounds. I'm gonna pop up the thing here explaining what rows they are and I'll be right back and I'll explain how I do the legs right after. Be right back. All right, so we have gone around 11 times. So we have 11 rows of just pure going around and around and around and around for all 36 stitches each row. So whatever 36 times 11 is, I'm not gonna do the math on that. Um, <laughs> I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. We have, I'm gonna put this down for a second so I'm not just clanking it everywhere and making loud noises. We have 36 stitches on our work and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to split it kind of. So across here we're going to make 15 stitches into a leg and then over here we're going to make 15 stitches into a leg. So essentially the way that we do that is we're going to split the difference. We're going to single crochet into what our 12th row would be and we're going to go for just seven stitches. We're just going to go seven stitches into the 12th row two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so now that we've gone seven stitches across, what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of flip our work and we're going to count backwards to 15 to wherever the 15 stitches across from it, essentially. So we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm going to put my hook inside that 15th stitch, essentially. I'm gonna double check and make sure that that's 15 stitches and I didn't just skip something. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We are on our 15th stitch here. And what we're going to do is we're gonna take our loop and we're gonna put it onto our hook. That's why we went in. Oh my goodness, there we go. That's why we went in, that's 15 stitches. 15. We're going to take our loop and we're going to put it onto our hook very gently. So we have this right here and we're going to put it on like so. We're going to pull that through our 15th stitch like so and we're going to do a little bit of a chain and we're going to go back inside that same 15th stitch and we're going to just do a single crochet to make sure that we're all up and at them. We just split our work and now we're going to just single crochet around for 15 stitches for six rounds. We're just gonna keep going around and around and I'll show you how I go over right here in just a moment, as soon as we get there. I like to grab here and here and here. We're gonna keep going around and around. We're technically on our second round because that going over when we went seven and then went across, we are now back onto the second row as soon as you pass where you started your seven stitches before. So this side is the side that shows which is your start basically, if I can you know speak words the right way. All right, so now I'm gonna see if I can show this the right way. We have one stitch right here and it kind of looks like we have a stitch here, but that's really just the loop kind of being funky. So I'm gonna go inside that little loop right there. I'm gonna start going back into the single crochet from there. So now we are on, we're still on our second uh, row. We're gonna keep going until we get to the end of this row. And then I'm gonna go around for four more rounds and then I'll show you how I decrease. 
we have 15 stitches active and so we're going to kind of do things and decrease a little bit differently but not that much differently all right so i am on the third round we're going to go three four five six so technically four more around and then i'll show you how i do my decreasing and then i'll show you how i add on my other leg all right be right back as soon as i do four more rounds after this so we're on the third one we need to go four five and six because that's one and two we're on the third be right back and i'll show you how i do my decreasing okay so i've gone around for six times you can tell because this is the seven that i initially went into for the 12th round around that's one, two, three, four, five, and six right here. So we have 15 stitches still on our little foot here. Well, we're gonna be rounding that out. And essentially what we're going to do is we are going to take those 15 stitches and bring them down to 10, and then take those 10 stitches and bring them down to five. So for the next two rounds, we're going to be doing some decreasing. My cats are having some issues on the bed, so I apologize if you hear hissing. Um, they're very territorial. All right, so I'm going to decrease from 15 down to 10. Essentially, we're gonna be do doing five decreases right there. We're going to single crochet one, and then put two of those stitches in a seamless decrease together. And we're gonna do that four more times. So one, and then take the next two stitches and bring them together. One, next two stitches together and bring them together. That's the third repetition. One, decrease, that's four. And so now we're on our last one, this and decrease. We now have 10 stitches and it is starting to close up. Next up, we're going to decrease another five stitches. And instead of single crocheting one and decrease, we're literally going to decrease every single stitch. So we're gonna go from 10 down to five. We're gonna go decrease these two together. So that's one decrease. We wanna have five of them decreased. The next one, decrease the next two stitches. That's your second repetition. Go into the third one together, decrease, fourth decrease, these two together. I'm trying not to split my yarn. And this is our last decrease. We're going to put those two together and decrease them. So now we have five stitches and here's what I'm gonna do. This is a little bit funny with how I do this, but I promise this is the more seamless way to do it and it makes the most sense as far as um, just the way you do things. I'm gonna take my tail and leave myself a good length. I'm gonna pull my tail out like so, and I am going to leave this for now. I'm not going to sew in my tail yet, not until after I have stuffed. So, I don't stuff until after I have my other legs um, first six rows done, and then I stuff it all together. And I'll show you exactly how I do that. So, here I'm going to leave, it's going to be a little confusing because I have a lot of these just strings hanging out. I have this work. I'm going to keep my right leg and I have it all facing the right way. The right leg should be on your right. Here we're going to skip the next three stitches. So technically this stitch right here, let me see if I can get that to close up, is from that previous round. So you're going to want the V shape from right there. So that's the first stitch. We're not going to go into the second stitch. We're going to go into the third stitch. We're going to skip these three stitches. Let's see if I can show it better. There we go. This is the first, second, and third. We're going to skip those and go into the fourth stitch from your line right there. So one, two, three, we're skipping. We're going to take our yarn and I'm going to leave a very long tail for sewing. This is probably gonna be close to like 12 inches long. So I leave, the longer your tail, the less you'll have to worry about it later. So I'm gonna pull my work and I'm going to slip stitch that into the fourth stitch. I'm then going to chain one just to give myself a little bit of room. I'm gonna go back inside that same exact stitch and I'm going to single crochet one. 
you're going to let this string just kind of lay in front because this is what you're going to use in order to sew up your middle three stitches in the center. Now we're going to single crochet 15 stitches, just like we did with the other leg. So this is our second stitch that we're going into. We've already done our first stitch. We're going to go into our second stitch, two, next stitch, three, four, five, Eee. Now I'm going to redo that. I frogged it. There we go. See how that yarn's all split? If I had just let that lay like that, then it would be looking weird. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, nope, redo that again, I split my yarn again, it's really old yarn so it likes to try to split, 13, 14, and 15, all right, so now on this side you should have three stitches between you and your right leg again, so one, two, three, that is accurate. We're going to kind of just ignore the string right here. I know I've got a lot of strings going on, but trust me, this is literally the easiest way to do this. We are going to go across and start working into our very first single crochet that we just made for that round. I like to go through both loops for just this one stitch. I find that it makes it a bit stronger and I'm going to just single crochet that one and we're gonna go around again for five more rounds and we're going to repeat what we did for our decreases on the other leg. I'm gonna finish off this leg real quick. I'm gonna go around for five more rounds. This counts as your first round, so that's why we're gonna be just basically doing the six rounds again but this is how I split it off and that's how I make it even. I'm gonna finish off this leg and then I'll show you how I sew up this little middle section and how I also stuff. Um, I am going to actually finish off the six rows and then I'm going to stuff and then I'm gonna finish off my leg. So stuff however you want. I find that this is the easiest way. Um, if you want to stuff while you're going, I'll show you what I do when I stuff and how I then sew in my bottom piece here. I'm going to finish this leg, I'm going to stuff, and then I'll show you how I do the rest of that. All right, so basically for the rest of this leg, you're gonna be doing five more rows of just single crocheting around, and then you're gonna do the same decrease that you did on the right leg. You're gonna go from 15 down to 10, and from 10 down to five. I'll be right back as soon as I get that other leg done. Be right back. Okay, so we have stuffed our work a little bit. I have this leg currently actively going on, but you can see that there's a bit of a divot. So I'm gonna keep stuffing a little bit more. But first, I wanted to show you, before I finish off this leg, I always stuff pretty much until it's almost done. I'm going to be finishing off this leg the exact same way as this leg over here. Right and left are going to be symmetrical, so they are done the exact same way. So we are six rows in on the left leg and we just did single crochet one and we're going to decrease we're on row seven of our left leg left leg yes left leg there we go try not to split our yarn single crochet one decrease we're just doing the exact same way as the other leg single crochet one I'm trying to show it the best i can because it, once it gets big it's a little unwieldy decrease like so, then we have two more decreases. Don't mind the other two strings that are just kind of doing their own thing over there. Try not to get them mixed up, because I've done that before, but I'll pick up the wrong cord, the wrong string, and try to uh, work with that instead. And it's like, oh, I need to undo everything that I just did because I did it wrong. There we go. And this is our last decrease of this round. Oh, and I lost all of it single crochet one that's gonna be a little bit tighter because I don't want it to be that loose there we go and single crochet one there we go and now decrease and now that we have done that we are going to decrease every single stitch and leave it just like I did with the other one so I'm going to decrease every single stitch so one 
and that's five stitches across. Second stitch, decrease. Third stitch to decrease. I know this is a little bit everywhere, but I showed a bit better on the first leg. And <laughs> I had less stuffing and less stuff to do. So there you go. Fourth stitch to decrease them into. Nope, I'm not going to split my yarn. There we go. I'm going to try not to bounce my camera as well. There we go. And this is our last stitch that we decrease these two together. So now you should have five stitches active happening right there. We're going to cut a decently long tail so that I can sew and do all those things with. I have about eight inches, probably closer to ten, let's be real. Um, I'm going to pull my yarn all the way through like so and now I'm going to finish off stuffing. I want this leg and this leg to be symmetrical so I have a giant pile of fluff that I want to get to work so I'm going to roll my yarn up a little bit and I'm going to try to just shove it into my little left leg here and I'm gonna try to make sure that every part of this is as stuffed as I want it to be. As soon as my legs are as stuffed and I'm, I'm happy with how stuffed they are, this is actually pretty good, I can move these tails and sew them inward and I'm gonna show you how I do that in just a second. I wanna make sure this is as good as I want it to be. So I'm gonna keep going, there we go. That's a good leg and this is also pretty much the same. I can also keep stuffing just a little bit more if I want to, but I think thus far I'm going to put a little bit on the corner there just to help reinforce that little side a bit better, but otherwise yeah, I'm going to stuff some more all throughout there. That needs stuffing. So I kind of just keep pushing it outwards, especially towards the sides here where it tends to go inward on itself. So there we go. So I'm pretty happy for the most part. This is almost as stuffed as I'm going to make it, but these legs are definitely as stuffed as they're going to be. So I'm gonna move these so that I can actually use my darning needle and sew it in. So here I'm going to get it actually in camera and focus. There we go. I'm gonna put my darning needle with my tail attached to it and I'm going to start going through the backs of these stitches into the front on every single one of these five stitches. So that's two. Go into the back, into the front, three. Try not to bounce, four. It's hard to get this to focus. And five, and then I'm gonna go through the very top of the stitch uh, of the, I'm, I'm kind of overlapping them essentially. I'm gonna go through the very top of that previous stitch. I'm gonna pull it so that it's nice and tight. And then I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go through the center, like so, of where those five stitches began. And I'm gonna try to put my needle out as far as I can on that leg like so, and I'm going to pull on it. That's why I like them stuffed first, because it makes it so it's nice and rounded and you can't tell. I'm then going to take my darning needle, I'm going to shove it up the side of my little body, and I'm trying to get it as far away from where it originally began, so that it's a, got a little bit of length, so in case it does unravel for whatever reason, it's still inside the body. I'm going to do that again. Where I'm going to put it a little bit closer to the top of the body like so that way it kind of goes up a little bit it has a little bit of leeway and I don't have to worry about my tail so there we go that leg is done I'm gonna get rid of this tail into my tail ends pile and I'm gonna do the same thing to the other leg so we're going to do that a bit quickly we're going to again go through the backs of these stitches into the front like so. Three. Four. 
well that's four, five and then this is the top of that one so now we're going to again pull our tail make it nice and tight and we're going to take our needle and go through the center and go outward with it and pull on it that's the nice thing is that I can also while this is going on I can make sure that my foot is shaped how I want it to be and how I want it to look. So that's pretty much what I want to do with my body and my foot. There we go. I'm gonna also take it again and put it a little bit further out up here would be more preferable. And then I'm going to just kind of let it relax and I'm going to cut it like so. So now the only string you should be having coming off your body is the one between the legs. And we're actually going to seam that using the mattress stitch. But first I want to make sure that this is as stuffed as I want it to be. I'm going to put a little extra right here just to make sure that it doesn't go inward on itself against the leg. It has a tendency to want a lot more stuffing along here for some reason and I don't really know why. Just gravity just does it that way I guess. I'm gonna make sure that I've got enough stuffing in him. It's still got like a ton of, it could use a bunch more, but I also don't wanna overstuff because if you overstuff, you end up with a lot of stuffing showing. So I kinda just kinda work on it as I go and squish and push and all of that good stuff as I go along with the body. And you see, I just kinda like let it tell me where it needs more stuffing. And I push, and I push, and I push. So actually, that should be mostly good. I am going to sew up half of it and finish off the stuffing, and then I will show you how I finish it off completely. So we're gonna take our darning needle for right now, and what I like to do is you have three stitches here, and you have three stitches here. One, two, three. Let's see if I can get that to focus better. One, two, three. And then on this side, one, two, three. You also have these kind of stitches that are were already single crocheted into, but they're a little bit wide. So what I like to do is a mattress stitch is essentially when you go through the backs of your stitches only and keep going back and forth just through the backs of the stitches. So I'm going to actually just take my needle and put it through the center of that little piece over here, if that makes sense and I'm going to pull on that, and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm gonna go through the back and into the front through the opposite piece. We still have not gone through our active stitches, the three that we skipped when we were doing the main body. We're just going through those two pieces right there because they're a little bit open and I don't like that. So now we're gonna go through, I go through the entire stitch, so the, both of the Vs, I don't just go through the front stitch. You could just go through the front stitch, but I like how it looks more and I think it's stronger. So I'm going to go through from the back and into the front and pull on that. And I'm going to do the exact opposite with the adjacent stitch across from it. So the one that came out from next to it, like so. I'm going to pull on it. I'm going to pull on it and not bounce my screen. Really tight, tightly tight, tightly. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with the opposite stitch, like so. And now I'm going to make sure that that has enough stuffing. I still feel like there needs to be just slightly more. So I'm going to hit my screen one more time. And I'm going to put another ball in there and hopefully that should be all she wrote for stuffing. I think that should be it. That feels good. That feels like a good amount. So now I'm going to go into the second middle stitch of the three on the opposite side because I already went through the one across from it and do that exact same thing. Now we're on our final stitch on this side, go through, and on our final stitch on that side, go through. And now we have the exact same problem over here where we've already single crocheted into these stitches, but they're wide and it leaves a big hole. So what I'm going to do is do the exact same thing that I did over here and I'm gonna go through that stitch from the back to the front and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the opposite side where I kind of go through both the piece that's hanging and the stitch. 
So I'm going to pull on that. I'm going to pull on all of it really tightly. And as you can see, it is nice and seamed up. And now I'm going to take my tail and I'm going to stab it through the body right close to where my last stitch was. I'm going to stab it in and I'm going to go through the center and try to get that as far away from where it originally started as possible. So I'm going to put it through here, nice and clean. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing where I go through that same stitch. I'm going to take my needle. I'm going to go through a little bit further away. So now that string is all the way over here. So even if it does come undone, even just the slightest little bit, it will be really far away. So it will not come undone undone. So if that makes sense, I hope that makes sense. So we're going to cut that tail and now your body is done. And I'm going to show you how to make cute little arms. That is actually the easiest part of this tutorial. The leg shaping is the hardest part, as I said, and I really liked how this body came out. It actually turned out very, very well. And I'm pretty happy with how he looks. I'm going to be doing some arms real quick, so I'll be right back as soon as I get my yarn out. I actually really like how this green one turned out better than the other two bodies, but you'll also notice that it is slightly, like ever so slightly shorter than the other one, and I think it's because this was balled up for quite a while, so the worsted weight, uh, basically the weight of the yarn is a little bit thinner because it's been compacted and smushed for so long. So some people may notice that, some people may not. But basically, let's go ahead and get to the arms. I'm going to be doing, for the arms, just two basic arms. And if you already know how to do the body, basically, you're just gonna be doing some increasing. You're gonna make a ring and place six single crochet on the inside of it. Then you're going to increase each of those six stitches. Every single one of those stitches you increase. So you're going to go from six to 12, just like we did at the very first two rows of our body. And then instead of doing any more increases, we are going to single crochet around and around and around until we reach row nine. So the first two are increase rounds and then one, two, three, four, five, six single crochets around and around and around, six rows of it. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take just a little tiny itty bitty little piece of fluff just enough that it can go into the tip of the first couple rows for your hand so that is our hand for our body and i'm going to sew this onto the side of this body as soon as i get both of them done i like to do it along row 11. so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven right here i'm going to take my little bamboo stick and i'm going to wiggle Swiggle, swiggle, that's the term I'm gonna use. Stab, be a bit more aggressive, that into the side of the body. That way it lines up with row 11 and I can just sew it on. I'm also going to finish single crocheting the six rows for this arm and then I'll be right back and show you how I sew that on real quick. And then this body's pretty much done. That is all the sewing and all, I mean, that is all the basic single crochets for this body. It is super easy and I'll be right back as soon as I finish the other arm real quick and show you how that is sewn on and how I do a basic sewing technique along the arm. Be right back. All right, so I have both arms done and I currently have them both pinned to their sides. I'm going to start with the, well, I guess his left, our right arm. I guess it's his left arm. There we go, our right visually. Um, we're going to go into our work. I have a piece of the tail right here. I'm just leaving a very long tail so that I can sew it. And I'm gonna go from the bottom of the stitch and up because this is on the side here. I'm then going to go through for the back and into, I mean, from the front and into the back of the stitch. It looks like this opposite when I'm putting it that way. And then I'm gonna pull and then I'm gonna go through the side of the stitch like so on the body. Go again from the back, I mean, front and into the back like so and i'm going to keep doing that until the arm is completely sewn on every like third stitch like so i'm going to kind of tug on my tail like so tug on it and it's going to bring all those stitches that we just essentially did they're not really stitches they're just kind of how we sew it all tight and in together like so we're going to go from the front and into the back and keep going and I'm trying to keep it straight along the row 
That way it makes it easy for when we do the other side and it more evenly lines up and it just looks more straight on the body, I guess. Tug on the tail a little bit. Pull. Front to back. Pull. Then here, when we turn our corner, I kind of go downward because we're going to sew our bottom. I'm going to take this tail off because it's on there pretty much. We're going to take it and kind of start navigating it downward. And we're going to do the same thing where we put it on the side. And now we're going to kind of lift the arm like that. Not kind of. We are going to lift the arm. And now I'm going to lift and go down like so. Just kind of going around the entire arm. So now we're going to go like so and pull it and tug and kind of just keep going like so tug down and over tug pull it so that it makes it a bit more even from the front of the stitch down through the back and I just lost it off my thing. Eek! Alright, and we're almost done actually. Pull through, pull through. We're rounding back where we started. Pull on that, tug on your tail, go through the final back stitch, which is going to be that. It's going to be a little bit hard to see. But you're essentially going to keep tugging, and then you're going to take your darning needle, and then you kind of just stab it through the body, like so. If that makes sense, make it nice and snug. And that is how I attach my arm. I'm going to attach the other arm real quick, and then we're all done. I'm pretty much happy with how this turned out. Now that I'm looking at him, he is definitely noticeably shorter than the other two. Um, especially the black one and the brown one. So my little green Cyclops will be on his own and maybe just be like a little shorter version of it. All right, so basically that's all there is to it. This is what the arms look like when they're sewn on and I have them pretty evenly matched. I always try to just line up this side with this side so that I can see that the same row is touching. That's pretty much all I do for the arms. It's super duper easy. And if you sew things all the right way, it looks great. All right, so this is gonna eventually be a Cyclops. He will be a Sasquatch and he will be a Wendigo. And next week, we're going to take just the base body, no arms, I'm not gonna be sewing any of those on. And we're gonna take this purple guy and turn him, I'm gonna put him right there, into one of the little guys from Among Us. I'm really proud with how this turned out. I'm really excited, so hopefully I'll upload this, and then tomorrow I'm gonna start working on filming uh, me turning this purple one into an Among Us character. So stay tuned for that. Let me know if you wanna see any other colors for the Among Us crew. I may try to put some of these things on Etsy. Let me know if you're interested in that. We have a Patreon, we have a PayPal, we have all that other stuff. If you're interested in supporting the channel, let me know. Comment down below what you think about this. If you would like a uh, more step-by-step -step how to actually like do the single crochet, how to do the things in the round, all of that stuff for this kind of pattern. I do go a little bit more quickly with these intermediate patterns, so let me know what you guys think think. Uh, hit a nice little like, subscribe. If you dislike this video, let me know why. Let me know if it's just a little too quick for you. All that stuff down below. You know what to do. You've been on YouTube for probably a while because everybody has. <laughs> All right. Until next time, guys. Bye.